Hi, welcome back to the shop. Well, believe it or not, it's been a year since I started the podcast. And after looking at the numbers, it appears that the first project I did, which is the wine barrel furniture, seemed to be the most popular. So uh, to kind of say thank you for sticking around and watching, I'm going to build some more uh, wine barrel furniture. Uh, today, we're going to start by building a table just out of a couple out of a wine barrel top. Well, let's get started. To get started with making a table, the first thing you need to do is take the wine, the, the top from the wine barrel and pull it apart. These are just held uh, together in compression, um, sometimes with a piece of reed in between uh, the, the boards, and that's all that keeps it watertight. Now, these things are held together uh, three different ways, and before I take this one apart, the first thing I want to do is just mark it with a triangle so I know how it comes apart. This particular top is held together with uh, some dowels, and if you look in between here, there is a piece of reed that we can pull off, and this reed would expand as the moisture gets to it and help seal that joint. Uh, that's real common on a lot of these tables. Another way the tops are held together is with little metal pins. Um, if you can avoid using these tops at all, you want to do that. Again, there's usually a piece of reed in here. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, they just don't go back together no matter how hard you try. They're really difficult to put back together when they just have the, the metal pins. The last way that a lot of these tops are held together is with a tongue and groove joint. And this is probably the best, if you can get these kinds of tops, these would be the best ones to use for this project. There's no reed in here, uh, they index themselves well, and they're really easy to glue up. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull this one apart. Now on this table, one of the things you'll notice is that um, I have the markings from the vineyard and from um, the place in France where the barrels were made. So I want to kind of keep that, just kind of add some, um, some character to this, uh, this tabletop. And as I did before, I'm going to mark it with a triangle. And now I'm just going to pull it apart, kind of clean up those joints, make sure there's nothing dirty or anything like that in there, and I can just glue it right back together. Once the pieces to the barrel top have been separated, I'm just going to take the two end pieces and set those aside, and I'll glue those up later, and I'll go ahead and concentrate on the, the center section here. And this is basically just put glue in and smear it around. This is only slightly more interesting than actually watching the glue dry. When you put the two pieces back together, you want to make sure that they're aligned correctly or you're going to have a lot of problems further down the road. For a clamp, I'm just going to be using this parallel clamp that I bought from, I think I got it at a ReStore, I think it cost me $5, and it does an okay job keeping everything fairly flat and stable here, and I'll add some additional clamps as necessary. Well, it looks like we got good squeeze out along all the joints. Um, so I'm just going to set this aside to, to dry for now, and we can start working on the legs. 
Now the table is going to take a total of six barrel staves, four for the legs and then two for the cross members or spreaders down below. Uh, I found that 22 inches is about the right height for legs to go along with the Adirondack chairs that I built. Although you will see me building a second table here and there, it's going to be a little bit higher and that's at a special request uh, by my wife. Um, I've set up a stop block and now to support this material when I cut it off, I just have a piece of scrap wood stuck in here next to the blade that will hold it into position. The next thing I want to do is cut the cross braces and since the barrel top is about 23 inches wide, I'm going to cut them just a little bit more than that and I'm going to do that based on the center of the stave. So I've identified the center and I'm just going to measure out 11 and a half inches on either side and I can cut those. Because it's not that high of an arc in the middle, to support it I'm just going to take a scrap piece of stave and run that up tight so that I have that support and I won't get the bind when I cut through. Now that the legs and cross braces have been cut, we can go ahead and finish gluing up the top. Again, the important thing about this glue up is to try to keep it as flat as possible. So I have a couple of blocks I'll be clamping to it. Now that the glue is dried, I took the top out of the clamps and I'm ready to clean it up. And to do that, I'm just going to do a, a simple sand with some 120 grit just to kind of clean up the, the, uh, the top a little bit. I want to leave as much of the original uh, markings from the, the wine as I can just to kind of give it that little bit of character. Um, not going to go any farther than 120. I found that's really all I need to do on these. We're now ready to start the assembly process. The first thing I want to do is take my four legs and turn them over and in the crows here or the little notch where the lid sits, I want to drill two holes for on each leg. And this way when I drill them from the other side I'll know that I got them ex exactly in the right spot. The other thing I do, once I've got them drilled, I can turn over and go ahead and countersink these holes. I'm now ready to attach the legs to the barrel top, or in this case the tabletop. And I'm just going to line it up on the crows. And one of the things you'll notice is that the leg is not lined up with the grain. It's kind of off at about 45 degree angle. I found this uh, looks a little nicer and works a little better uh, in the long run. First thing I want to do is drill a hole to receive a number eight stainless steel screw. Because I'm going to be moving these legs in and out a little bit later on, I'm only going to attach one screw for now, and then after I get the rest of the table assembled, I'll go back and put in the second screw. To make sure the legs are straight across from each other, I'm just going to use a piece of scrap wood kind of as a straight edge going through the center of the table, and I'll just mark on the other side about where that other leg needs to go.
14 and a half, 14 and a half. Now that the legs are installed, we can go ahead and install the lower stretchers. Now I just have this set in place temporarily with a couple of blocks that are about three inches tall on either side, and I'll get those lined up fairly close. Because of the curve of the, the barrel stave, one of the things I have to do is scribe these in, and I'm just using a pair of compasses to mark those. I've set my compasses to the widest gap that I can find in here, and now it's just a matter of tracing out where I need to make my my cuts. Once I have both ends of the stretcher marked, I'm just going to grind away the material with my belt sander that I've secured firmly in my vise. And I can't emphasize securely enough, otherwise you have all kinds of excitement in your shop. Don't ask me how that happens. Once I have a, a fit that I like, I'm just going to put in a single screw on either side to hold it while I lay out the second stretcher. I'm going to do the second stretcher just like I did the first one, except I'm going to have it rest directly on top of the stretcher below it. And I want to make sure my distance from the table to the bottom of the stretcher is the same on both sides. So, three and five eighths, three and five eighths, okay. And just like before, I'll use the compasses to scribe the end. Uh, before I put in the rest of the screws and lock everything down, I want to make sure that my stretchers are all basically even. And I can do that just by measuring the distance uh, from one side to the other, and I'll do that in both in all four directions. Ten and a quarter. Now that I have the cross stretchers centered, I can go through and drill out and countersink for the four stretchers around the edges. I'll countersink these uh, screws here in the center and then I'll come back and put in a screws along the top as well. The last thing I need to do is fill all my screw holes with some plugs. Well, that's about as far as I can go on this project for now. Once the glue dries on the plugs, I'll just trim those flush and, and then sand it smooth. I'll probably put a stain on some of these and others I'll leave natural. I do have three of them here, uh, but I'm going to have to wait till spring before I can spray a finish. And that's really the best way I've found to put a finish on this barrel furniture, just to spray it um, because of all the little nooks and crannies and cracks it's hard to get with a brush. Now, one of the things that I've seen people do in the past is they'll take a barrel hoop and they'll put it around the top of a, a table to kind of act as a retainer or a barrier and just add some more visual elements to it. Well, as usual, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to email me at andrew at And until next time, enjoy your day.